President Cyril Ramaphosa has ordered the deployment of 2,900 members of the South African National Defence Force to assist in the fight against illegal armed groups in the in the West DRC. Now, this is between 15 December 2023 uh, till 15 December this year. Now, the budgeted expenditure just to be incurred is just uh, over 2 billion rand. Let's speak about this now. Stellenbosch University Department of Strategic Studies, Professor Abel Yesterays joins us live now. Prof, thank you so much for your time this evening. I mean, this deployment to the Eastern DRC, I wonder in your view, firstly, what has been your reaction to that? Because as we're now seeing, it's going on until the 15th of December this year. Yeah, it's an interesting decision. Um, it is a decision to replace uh, the UN uh, mission that's been running in the eastern part of the DRC with a SADC mission. Um, the SADC forces, uh, South Africa, Malawi and Tanzania will contribute about uh, 5,000 uh, troops to that mission. So it's an interesting decision, you know, you're replacing a mission um, that is comprehensive in nature, uh, consisting of about 17,000 people with a more or less military mission uh, consisting of uh, 5,000 people. So this is uh, quite an interesting decision and it raises uh, more questions than, than answers. And I'm going to get to your questions in just a moment, but can we afford it? I mean, you look at the fact that right now the president's saying it's just over 2 billion rand. Yeah, the 2 billion rand, of course, the, the immediate question is where is it is to come from. And from what I understood is that it's going to come from the existing defense budget. Now, we have a, a defense budget of about 50 million, uh, 15 billion. And um, and so two billion rand out of that 50 in a defense budget that is already under tremendous uh, pressure is quite an extensive amount of money. So, yeah, this is uh, once again an interesting decision. Um, uh, you know, we we will have to to rob uh, Peter to to pay Paul here in a certain way to keep this mission uh, running. So, Prof, I'm going to get to your questions in just a moment, but I want to latch on to something that you say. So should we then be balancing between national ambition, the capabilities as well as the budget? Well, the, the problem with the South African defense budget has always been that we overspending on personnel. Your, your typical defense budget is sort of divided into equal thirds uh, in terms of personnel expenditure, uh, capital expenditure and operational expenditure. Um, but in the case of South Africa, we're spending quite an extensive amount of money on our uh, our personnel budget. So there's almost uh, no, no money for capital expenditure and there's very little money for, uh, for uh, operations in the defense budget. So this is uh, a, a lot of pressure that we're putting on the defense budget and we need to keep in mind here that this is just one of a number of operational deployments we have at the moment there's also the deployment in mozambique and of course there's a number of domestic deployments that the military also should uh, fund from the defense budget so uh, yeah this is putting a lot of pressure on the defense budget and it's quite interesting because when one reads that defense review, um, you know, it talks about the balancing or even the scaling down of some of the ambitions. But I wonder for you then, what are some of the questions that you then have, especially when you look at this particular deployment? Well, I think the most important question is the question of uh, national interest. What, what national interest we have in the DRC that is driving this deployment? I think this is a very important uh, question that has not been answered. Is it, uh, is it business interest? Um, is it security interest? What are the South African interests that we need to protect or extend in the DRC? That is a critical question. And then on a, on a, at an operational level, I should say there's quite a number of concerns, uh, concerns of uh, support in particular. How are we going to support those forces um, logistically, uh, air support to those forces, medical support to those forces, intelligence uh, support to those forces? So there's a lot of questions about uh, the, the, the whole question of support. 
Um, and this specifically concerns the, the fact that we are working with the uh, Malawians and the Tanzanians. Uh, it raises questions in terms of interoperability uh, within uh, the forces that, that will be uh, deployed. And then, uh, you know, I, I think one has to consider the fact that um, you are deploying into a country where there's a complex emergency. And with a complex emergency, um, I'm, 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 it, it means that there's uh, quite a number of conflicting groups and entities uh, that is involved in the eastern part of the DRC. And there's two particular uh, role players that concerns us here. The one is the M23 rebel group that all of a sudden is back in strength. They've been shooting at South African helicopters last week. Um, and then there's the, the Rwandese forces that has an interest in the area and that's deployed in the area. And, you know, in Mozambique, we're working with the Rwandese in, in that mission. And in the DRC, we're working against the Rwandese in, in that mission. It, it, it just doesn't make sense to me uh, looking at it from a strategic perspective. So you talk about the national interests that you're saying you're wondering what is being protected. And, and, and I would like to borrow then from the presidency statement. It says in fulfilling South Africa's international obligations towards the South African development community mission to support the Democratic Republic of Congo, President Cyril Ramaphosa ordered the employment of 2,900 members of the South African National Defense Force to assist in the fight against illegal armed groups in the Eastern DRC. Does it answer your questions about the interest that you're concerned about? Not really. Uh, it doesn't really tell us. I mean, there's international obligations. Um, yes, what, what kind of international obligations are we talking about? Um, it's, it's interesting that the UN forces are, are pulling out of that region. One may argue that uh, the international forces are, in fact, doing the opposite of what we are doing. Uh, the UN mission are, are being uh, the UN mission is being pulled up out of that area after 20 years, and uh, there's a lot of questions about the strategic e effect uh, that mission accomplished after 20 years, and now we're replacing that with a, a SADC mission. Um, it doesn't really answer the question in terms of what is South African interest in in that area. Um, is it the interest of uh, security in Africa that is uh, so important for South Africa to deploy forces into uh, that area? Um, I'm not so sure. I have a lot of questions about uh, South African interest in, in that area. All right. Uh, but let's, uh, of course, see if, uh, Prof, we will get some answers to see if maybe, um, you know, we can be told a bit more. But of course, they always, uh, you know, keep their cards close to their chest sometimes when it comes to some of the information around some of these deployments. But thank you so much for um, your insights there. That is Stellenbosch University Department of Strategic Studies. Professor Abel yesterday is, of course, uh, talking about uh, that decision um, to deploy around 2,900 members of the SNDF to assist in the fight against illegal armed groups in the eastern DRC.